Satabria, GCAA. Let's have a look around it. Hi, this is Mark from Skywagon University. Um, today we're going to have a quick look at a American Champion Satabria GCAA. There's a lot of different letters in there, KCAB, GCBC, there's a lot of different letters. I do not have them memorized, but I'm going to read a couple of specs off a printed out sheet that I've got. But the first thing is Satabria. It says 2001 GCAA, which is a good giveaway that it's a GCAA. But when I first started selling planes, I used to think Citabria was like a, an Italian company, Citabria, you know, and they could buy the Italian aerobatic plane. But what it is, is aerobatic, written backwards, A-I-R-B-A-T-I-C, Citabria. A lot of people already know that, but some of you didn't. So uh, that's a top tip of the day. So the GCAA, this plane is based on the, the Champ from the 50s and 60s. American Champion bought it and became the, these different models. And the, the time it changes when the, the tail became square. They got a square tail, Champs have rounded tails. So we'll walk around and have a look. They're basically conventional gear, tandem, stick, um, 150 slash 160 horsepower, like Cummings, fabric covered, fiberglass cowl, can very conventional inside. They got toe brakes, not like a cub with heel brakes. And uh, the GCAA has no flaps. So if we go around the back of the wing, this is the straight Cetabria. It's just got ailerons with spades, no flaps. If you want this plane with flaps, it's a K cab, GCBC cut. So to avoid confusion, I got, the, I got the cheat sheet here. The GCAA was introduced in 65. This plane is a 74. It was restored in 2001. So that's why it's got 2001 written on it, but it was literally everything was redone. The, um, the, the fabric, the tube, the engine, everything was done in 2001. So it says in 65, the GCAA came out and had a wooden spar and oleo shock gear. This has leaf spring gear because it's newer than a 68. Plus, it doesn't have the wooden spar, it's got a metal spar. We'll talk a little bit about the spar. Satabrias, all of them, had metal ribs. Every, everywhere you see a ribbon going with the cord of the wing is an aluminum rib. The spar obviously is here, and in the early planes it was wood. So where the wood and the metal meet, they were nailed together with little finishing nails just tacked in. And over time and age and dryness and weather and heat and expanding, contracting, the nails back out. So you have to, if you have a wooden spar to tabret, it's not, you, you don't not buy wooden spar to tabret. You, you buy them and they're strong and they're great and they fly. But you've, you've got to have these inspection panels every forward and front of the spar on every bay. You'll see them everywhere like this, all the way down the wing. So you can open it and look at whether the nails are backing out. And if they are, you tap them back in. But the ultimate fix, which is about $20,000, is a metal spar. So it's basically like a Cessna. Metal spar, metal ribs, fabric over it. This plane's got a metal spar. And when they have a wooden spar, you can actually grab the wingtip and do this, and you'll see it do this. They're flexible, which is good if it's aerobatic, because it doesn't break, it bends, it moves with the plane. So metal spar. So they were wood. This one is metal. Uh, they were 150 horsepower. So that would be an 0320, like a 172. And then just like the Warriors and the 172s with the 0320s, there's a 160 horse upgrade, which is high compression pistons, same engine, same block. So this one is 160 horse, which gives you 10 more horsepower, which is all useful for aerobatics. The ultimate adventure version of the Cetabria has aluminum gear legs. These are steel gear legs. And it also has wheel pants that it comes with the plane. They go on it, but they're not on it. This one has, doesn't have them on it at the moment. And the new owner of it is probably going to be, he lives in Wyoming and he's going to put slightly bigger tires on it. He's going to use it like a little mini bush plane. So it's going to go to Wyoming next week. So dimensions, it's six feet tall. It's 33 foot wingspan which is three feet less than a 182. It's a lot of wing and it's 22 feet long. So it fits in every hanger. 
very conventional. They hold 39 gallons of gas, two tanks, left and right. So some numbers, the gross weight is about 1,600 pounds and the empty weight's about 1,000 pounds. So it'll carry 600 pounds. So if 39 of that is gallons of fuel times six is about 240, 230 pounds of fuel. So 500 pounds of humans and they'll do it easily. Um, so they're a great sort of second plane in the hangar. If you've got a big, heavy, fast plane that you don't want to use for short hops, you can use the little fun tandem two-seater and, and do mild aerobatics in it. In fact, it doesn't have to be that mild. They're very good aerobatic planes. And, and then the, the fully inverted fuel and oil version of it, there's one with a one and a half gallon header tank under the dash where you can stay upside down. This doesn't have the... Um, laminar flow wing of the super decathlon though. So if this plane had 180 horsepower and a constant speed prop and a laminar flow wing, that's a super decathlon. And those are very aerobatic. And looking at the cheat sheet again, some numbers, speed, 110 knots. Never exceed speed, 162 miles an hour, which is 140 knots, 537 mile range at max cruise speed, Service ceiling, 17,000 feet. Rate of climb, 1,100 feet a minute. That's pretty impressive. That's at gross weight. Takeoff run over a 50-foot obstacle is 630 feet. Landing run, 755 feet, all at gross weight. So pretty accomplished little plane. Access, single door. A cub is split here, and the top opens against the wing, and the bottom folds down. This is a normal door, like a fairly big door, which makes it pretty easy to get in and out of. And then this rod here, if you were inside it, there's a handle on the other end of this. If it, a wing came off or something happened in aerobatics and you had to get out, you're wearing, an you're wearing a parachute if you're in an event of some sort, you turn the handle and it pulls these pins and ejects the door. And the same story I always ask is, how does it not hit things back there? But who cares, once you're out and you're parachuting. So the door is, big and easy to get in and out of. And then a quick look around the corner here, tow brakes. So it's got very conventional tow brakes. That's for the rear seat and then up front for the front seat. Let's have a closer look inside it. So here we are inside it in this particular plane. Here I'm just going to put on the avionics, let it all come on. I would say slightly over equipped for a small tandem tail dragger, but look, Garmin audio panel with a three light marker beacon, a Garmin 430 W with WAS, a slimline ICOM, COM, flip flop digital na um, COM, and then a uh, ADSB transponder. An Evolution, an Aspen Evolution personal flight display. It's initializing now, it'll come on. And it all fits in this little panel. So it's very well equipped. There's a glide slope here, um, there's even a backup little GPS over here. But that is a lot of avionics for, uh, look at this, flight director, HSI, and a 430. So normally you'd get a very similar gyro panel, a couple of nav comms, you wouldn't have this in here. Primer, starter button, mixture there behind the GPS, obviously the stick, push to torque on the end, and this is just part of the frame of the planes good handholds and they're padded too so you don't hit your head on them and you can hold it you can grip them as you climb in and out the two toe brakes which i prefer personally cub people like cubs because they've got heel brakes and they don't have to be on the brakes but these are very forgiving and if you're transitioning into a tail dragger this would be a good plane to do it in so getting in and out you literally just get in bam very conventional, excellent forward visibility, partially steerable tailwheel or free caster if you put the brake on too hard and it'll just spin around in its own gap or it'll taxi if you just press brake. If you just press rudder it'll just turn. Um, so nice and this door, this window here that's open, clips up against the window, the wing and um, you can fly with it like that with this open. So perhaps we should fly it. Okay, to start this, 
I put the radios on first, which you shouldn't normally do, but I put them on so the microphone works. So everything's on. Mixture in. Mags on. Click, click. They're already on, but I put them on earlier. On. Master on. Throttle to idle. Throttle's here on my left, too. There's one in the back there, too. Start a button. Clear. She's running. We got oil pressure. Door. I can put it on. I can fully close the um, door because the window is huge and I got it open on this side. And it's hot today. A little bit of left brake, turn her in her own space. And a lot of people have already seen these videos and they always wonder why there's a road here, but it's not actually a road, it's an access road. It's a back access road to a taxiway that goes to some hangars, the classical, that haven't been built and it's great for doing photo photography, so it's not a road. So this plane's 160 horsepower, which is like a 77 or newer 172 engine, or the later Warriors, same 0320. Steering is direct, positive steering on the rudder pedals, and if you want to turn steeper than that, a little bit of brake. It's not very windy today, but if it was windy, you'd obviously be aileron down into wind, you'd obviously be stick back if you're going forward, and if you're going, and if the wind's from behind you, you'd be stick forward so that it keeps the tail down. So generally when you taxi a tail dragger, you hold the stick back. But I'm going very slowly on a calm day, so it doesn't really matter. Also, another thing you can do in a tail dragger with a free car steering tail wheel is if you're checking the airport environment before you fly. Birds on final, no planes on final. You can just check the whole thing. Okay, then a very conventional run up. Controls, full and free, instruments. Gas, on, attitude, nine or the planes, trim, run up. So stick back, 1700 RPM. And the mags are up here on the left side, up on the thing. So you're going to reach back here and get a left mag, right mag, both. It can be open, but I'm going to close it, otherwise it'll just be all wind noise for the video. Possible traffic. So Tabriera 8571 Victor, departing runway 23, local flight, Placerville. Liner up on the center line, of course. Smoothly at full power, no flap, so the tail will fly when it's got enough airspeed. I push forward a tiny bit to help it, and she's in the air pretty damn quick. It is a little bit blustery. Placerville Strange, it's on a hill, and the air blows up the side over the top and burbles. So you get like calm days, but you get a little bit of wind actually at the airport. So here we are, climbing out. Very keen to climb. It's got a G meter in it, with red marks at four and a half and two. Imagine that. Step one, Victor, left crosswind. Two, three, Placerville. Step 
Madera traffic, skydivers in the air, 9,000 and below. Do not overfly to the east side of the airport, Madera. To cannabis. See the spades out there? Those spades help the ailerons to, they're, they're like power steering for the ailerons. See them moving. And there's a view of the Sierra, the snow-capped peaks. Up there is the airport, on a hill. So we're on downwind, we're doing about 85. I'm just going to let it do 85, because we're going to be landing pretty soon. And there are no flaps, so I have to clamp the descent appropriately. To the east. Well, you could go a long way in this. It's not like a small, uncomfortable plane. This would be as fun as a as practical as a 172 for, for two people, but fun because it's a tail dragger. So to lose altitude quickly in a plane with no flaps, everybody knows this, but I'll go over it in case somebody doesn't. If there are no flaps and you want to lose altitude, you slip it. Which just means crossing the controls, right, right, or left stick, and the plane will slide sideways through the air. It'd be inefficient, and in its efficiency, it'll lose altitude. I'll do it here for just, uh, the camera angles will probably show you the slip. Possible, uh, the tower rear of 7-1 Victor, turning from left base to final, full stop on 2-3 at Placerville. So, say I was too high on final, which I am. You would slip it. I got 290 0 echo, turning base for 3-1. Put left wing down, press right rudder. And we're losing a lot of altitude. Skydivers away over Madera. And some people favor right, some people favor left. 4,000 and below, if you can. I favor right. Placerville, step one, victory short final. Focus off on 2 3 at Placerville. County traffic, staff 290 as a train final for 3 1, Cody County. over the end of the runway again. So in an effort to make a perfect wheel landing, I used the whole bloody runway. But, you know, no flaps, first time. Nice though, very solid feeling. Not, it doesn't just bob around in the air, it does what you, you'd, make, you'd tell it to do something, it does it. Actually really nice. Okay, air conditioner on. Oh yeah. So I may have used all the runway landing, but at least we're color coordinated. See the blue shirt with the white check and the white of the blue of the Catabria and the blue bonnet flowers and the blue sky. So it's not all bad. But anyway, a quick look around this plane, a quick flight of it. Uh, a lot more videos like this, subscribe on the link right here and there's a bell you click on and you'll get notifications of other ones. We're trying to do one a week. If you have an interesting plane you want to do, call, let me know. And, uh, but thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. This is Mark at Skywagon University and we'll see you on the next video.